put your attention back to this line, which you should have just after you integrated, and uh, where you've got it in your working. And I think at this point, what we were trying to do was evaluate the constant, because this is, you know, we were given this, right? We sort of already knew what the constant was going to be, but we can't just pull it out of nowhere. We have to say, well, why is it equal to that? Now, in order to work out the constant, we had to put in some value for x, right? Because this thing has no x's in it, right? Um, we're just using this 1 plus x to the n because it's convenient for us. We know a lot about it, and it's binomial expansion. And we chose x equals 1, right? Why did we choose x equals 1? Do you remember? Um, if I remember right, we chose x equals 1, right? Because we saw that. In what we're required to prove, there's a 2 up here, right? See that 2? And that's kind of like an important number because it connects to, let's see here, um, <coughs> this number over here, right? So I can slot it in there, that'll become 1 plus 1 to the n plus 1, and that's where you get that, okay? So we thought, okay, that's a good way to go. But if you start to put some more lines in after this, you rapidly find out that it's not taking you very far, okay? And this is what's unusual. Um, between binomial expansions and what we're used to with integration. Okay? Normally when you get a constant integration out, if you have a value, any value, okay, like initial conditions or you know, after t equals 5 or whatever, if you pop it in, you'll get the constant out. Okay? You can have any set of values. But here, you have to choose a value which works. And in this case, one does it. Right? Now the question to, to you is, well, what else could we choose? Remember that what I'm after is c. So it's in my interest to get rid of as much of this other junk that I can uh, in order to simplify it out. So what else could x equal to? Hmm. Any suggestions? Yeah. Uh, something negative one. Okay, x equals negative 1. Okay, now I'll come back to this in a second. There is actually basically three main options that have come up over and over again. There, 1, minus 1, or what I'm going to show you in a second x equals 0. Now let's just look for a minute for why x minus 1 might be a better option than 1. Okay? What advantage does minus 1 have when we sub it in? Well, have a look at what you've got here. Um, in particular, this term over here, right? When you put x equals minus 1 in, what happens? Well, instead of becoming like a 2 to the n plus 1, something which requires an expansion, x equals minus 1 makes this term vanish, right? disappears, because it's going to be 1 minus 1 to some power, 0 to some power, so it, it goes away. Okay? Then you have to deal with this guy over here on the right hand side. Now this will be equal to something different. Now what I'm going to go after is, did it, did it work out for you? Uh, I got somewhere. <laughs> got somewhere, probably better than 1, because like I said, that left hand term disappears. I think the best option in this case is x equals 0. Now after you practice a few of these, you'll start to get a sense for which one you'll pick. I think you'll see why in a second, based on what we've got here, zero works best. Okay? So I'm going to say, to evaluate C, let x equal zero. Okay? Now that's the only purpose I have to evaluate C. Once I've gotten a value for C, I'll come back to this line, and just like we did before, I'll put in x equals one, because that gives me the actual identity that I'm after. Okay? But just while I'm trying to work out what this constant is, I'm going to go with this value. Okay? So what happens on both sides? I'm going to get uh, 1 plus 0, n plus 1. There's my constant. Okay. Now, over here, what happens? Well, you've got the sum of a whole bunch of terms, but what are the terms equal to? This is the clue that I was trying to give you yesterday, which obviously wasn't that good clue. When x equals to 0, right, um, all of these terms will vanish because it's 0 to the power of. Well, I don't care what it's to the power of, actually. It's just 0. So therefore, everything over here disappears. Even though it's a sum of a whole bunch of terms, um, n plus 1 terms, okay? Every single term in this series is 0, right? It's this times 0, and then the next one times 0, and so on, okay? So this right-hand side is 0. What do I have over here on the left? This is 1 to the power of something, right? And that's always just 1. Okay? Do that. So therefore, now I get my constant, and I can bring that back into this line up here. Okay? And since this is an n plus 1, same denominator, okay? I can say, therefore, 1 plus x to the n minus 1 on n plus 1. I've just brought them together as part of the same fraction. Okay? 
that's equal to the sum of 0 to m, m choose r, x to the r plus 1, and r plus 1. So now that I've gotten rid of my constant, now it's actually a helpful time to say, well, for this case, let's let x equal 1. Okay, so let x equal 1. Therefore, 1 plus 1 to the n minus 1. Sorry, I'm missing a plus 1. Yeah, thank you. Um, 1n plus 1. n choose r. That's 1. Okay, so now that I've written that full, full out, I can basically go to this line. That's, that's it. That's my 2. Oh, I keep forgetting to write it. Sorry. Minus 1. And then plus 1. And because this numerator is just 1, I'll put that entries on the top. And I'm done. Right. So, what do you get out of this? When you're trying to, um, when you have any identities that require some integration, and you're going to get a constant out. In order to evaluate that, you have to be careful with what value to actually choose. And in this case, you've got to choose one, and then you've got to choose another, okay, in order to get the actual identity at the end. But there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to, okay? Because um, this sort of long way of doing things, this choosing x equals zero and then choosing one, right? Um, it's a way to evaluate the constant, right? Why do we have a constant? Where did it, where did it come from? It, it, it came from um, not just integration, but the fact that this is a particular kind of integral, namely indefinite. indefinite. That's why there's a constant flying around, because I don't know what the primitive function will be, okay? But there's a kind of integration which avoids the problem of a constant altogether, right? Namely, a definite integral, yeah? And the thing is, we're, we're bringing integration in here, not because the question is like, find the area, blah, blah, blah. It's because we can connect what we know, this binomial identity, to an identity that I want to prove, right? So I integrated with respect to x because I wanted to. In the same way, I can integrate over a certain domain because it's convenient to me, okay? So instead of integrating and having an indefinite integral and then leading to this problem of a constant, okay? I'm going to choose this, um, these upper and lower bounds, okay? Not to 1. So on both sides, I'm going to get this. Now, why did I choose naught and 1? For similar reasons as why I chose naught and then 1 here. Okay? So it's going to take a bit of practice to work out, well, sometimes it's going to be minus 1 to naught or 0 to something else, but you'll see what happens when you integrate it out. Okay? I know already what the integrals are all going to be equal to, right? but it's a definite integral, so I'm going to go um, 1 plus x to the n on m plus, sorry, <coughs> plus 1. And I'm going to evaluate from that from 0 to 1. Okay? And on the right hand side, I have the summation, n choose r, and then this I'm also going to evaluate from 0 to 1. Okay? Now, watch this. Remember, all this means is evaluate it for 1 and then subtract it when you evaluate for 0. Right? So what I'm going to get is this 1 plus 1 plus 1. Subtract 1 plus 0. Okay, so that's just evaluate for 1, evaluate for 0. What happens on the right hand side? Evaluate for 1, so that's this. And then subtract, evaluate for 0. Okay, can you see what's happening? Here, I've got that 2 to the n plus 1 that I was after. And what's this going to be? This is just going to be minus 1, right? And of course they have the same denominator already. And then over here on the right hand side, this is going to be 1 minus 0, which is just 1. That's my numerator. So since the numerator is just 1, I'll stick the entries R at the top. And R plus 1 is this common denominator. Okay. So, which do you think is a better way to do it? Um, and I think it's really amazing. Um, I think it's a really elegant sort of solution to a very awkward looking problem. It's just one, two, three, four lines. I admit they look kind of terrible. This is um, starting to get a taste of sort of university level maths where it's like, oh, look, there's a number. There's like only a few numbers here. Everything else is like Greek and widow letters, that kind of thing. But 
Uh, can you see how it's a much more efficient way of really solving the same kind of problem? Okay, so sometimes a definite integral where you have to choose your boundaries carefully is really super helpful. Okay.